Hi everyone. The first Windows computer my family got really helped me in learning how to use computers and also how they worked. That computer was a machine based on DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.1. Back then, you really had to have knowledge of computing to help you easily install software and configure hardware. Without warning, you could have crashes, memory errors, and hardware conflicts if you had limited computing knowledge. I remember for months not being able to play a game an uncle gave me. This was because I didn't have enough available memory. The problem with that was that my computer had more than enough memory for the game, but I just did not understand how DOS handled memory. Eventually, after reading computer magazines that helped me grasp this knowledge, I was able to tweak the settings on my computer to be able to run the game. With Windows, Microsoft worked to alleviate these memory issues by improving the way it handled memory. But even with Windows improved memory management, at the time, Windows was not suitable for high performance gaming. So most Windows games were limited to being simple or slow paced. Every once in a while, I like to recreate the computing setup of my first PC. The easiest way to go about this is to use the DOSBox emulator. This emulator lets you run classic PC games on modern computers without the need to worry about all the complexities you had to go through back in the days. There are still some complexities, but it's nowhere near as bad as before. In this video, I'm going to go through an overview on using Windows 3.1 in DOSBox and use some of the Windows software and games I used to have. This video is not going to go into detail on how to exactly do this, I have another video that goes through those details. Check the description for the link. To set up Windows, in the folder that I'm using for DOSBox, I copied all the installation disks into an install folder. In there, I created folders for Windows 3.1 disks, drivers, and some Windows programs and games. The initial releases of Windows weren't real operating systems. Early releases of Windows were more like super advanced DOS shells because they actually relied on DOS to run. You couldn't run Windows without DOS. Anyway, after installing Windows, I get the Windows GUI. But now you have to install drivers for your computer hardware. Sound is currently not working, and in order to take advantage of the graphics hardware, I need to install drivers. That process is similar to what we have today, but back then, it wasn't as simple as plugging in your hardware and installing the software to make it work. This is another example on how you had to have computing knowledge to use a computer back then. In order to make peripherals work on old PCs, you had to be aware of certain resources that the computer uses to communicate with the hardware. You then had to know which of those resources were being used and which were free. Once you knew that, you had to take your peripheral and physically set some jumpers that tells the computer what resources the peripheral wants. If you set it incorrectly, then you would have hardware conflicts because multiple devices are trying to access the same resources. Today, we don't have to worry about that because operating systems do all the resource management themselves through the plug and play system. But back then, things could turn into a real nightmare if you weren't careful. In this sound driver installation, I had to change a resource called an interrupt to number seven because that's what the sound card requires. All other resources listed here were already set correctly. Video drivers usually were more straightforward because there was a standardized method to access display hardware. So after installing the video and sound drivers, let me do some testing. I'll boot up Windows 3.1 and you can see that I'm running it like any other DOS application by typing its command. Upon loading, I get the classic Windows 3.1 startup sound, confirming that sound is working. To further test sound, I'll also play some music files using the new programs that the sound driver installed. So now that we confirmed that the sound drivers are working correctly, let's test out the video drivers. Before the video drivers were installed, the Windows 3.1 GUI was set to 16 colors. You can imagine just how limiting this can be. This limitation can be illustrated by opening up images that use more than 16 colors and the results can be really bad. 
But if you do open up an image that was optimized for 16 colors, you get surprisingly good results. This optimization is done through the use of dithering. Dithering is a method of increasing the colors a user can see by cleverly arranging the current colors you already have. So now let's look at an image after the graphics driver has been installed. And this is a 256 color version of that moon photo. And since the image is not looking like it's a black and white mess, I can confirm that the graphics driver is working. Now that the appropriate drivers have been installed, it's time to install some Windows software. I'm going to install a combination of productivity programs, educational software, and games. My first PC conformed to a standard called the MPC Level 1 standard, MPC standing for Multimedia PC. This standard was created when CD-ROMs were becoming mainstream, and if your computer met that standard, that means software written to that standard would perform well on your computer. MPC Level 1 required computers to have at least a 16 MHz 386 SX CPU, 2 MB of RAM, 30 MB hard disk, a 640x480 256 color display, a sound card capable of 8-bit 22 kHz playback, a single speed CD-ROM, and Microsoft Windows 3.0. So I have several programs installed, and I'll start by using some educational programs I used to use. The Mayo Clinic Family Health Book was CD-ROM software that offered consumers a medical reference that is simple to understand and easy to use. It contained medical information that was aided by the use of images, audio, animations, and video. Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia was another CD-ROM package that helped families research subjects. It also offered articles with images, audio, and video. And yes, video playbacks was this small back then. Now onto some productivity applications I used. Before Microsoft Word became the standard for word processing, there was WordPerfect. I use this application for many school papers and its usage is not much different than modern word processors today. In high school, I was part of a desktop publishing class and the program we used for that class was Aldous PageMaker. This was desktop publishing software, which is different from a word processor in that its workflow is much easier when working with complicated page layouts. This type of software is great for creating flyers, brochures, newspaper layouts, and more. My earliest experience with Windows coding was with Borland C++ version 4.5. However, it was a really bad experience because the CPU on my computer, a 486SX 25MHz, would take half an hour to even compile a simple program. Some of the included sample programs would take well over an hour. It wasn't until I was in college and had a new PC that I was able to compile programs with ease. What would take an hour will now take seconds. Now onto some games. Since Windows wasn't really suitable for high performance games, I played a lot of puzzle and strategy games on it. These were good diversions to play when taking a break from schoolwork. Here are some of those diversions. Taipei is a mahjong game where you match the tiles to completely clear out the board. Pipe Dream is a puzzle game where the goal is to create a continuous pipe with the random pipe pieces given. Some pipe cleaner starts flowing and your job is to prevent it from catching up with you. Ski Free is a simple skiing game that many people have played. You can try out two different types of slaloms or just freestyle your way down the mountain. Tri Peaks is a card game where you try to clear three pyramid shaped decks. You clear cards by selecting them from the bottom of the pyramids. You have to make sure those cards are either one number lower or higher than the bottom deck. Jazz Ball is a game where the object is to trap the balls in the smallest space possible. You do this by building walls to cover up space, but don't let the balls touch the walls while they are being built for you, or you will lose lives. Finally, Chips Challenge is a game where you have to collect all the computer chips in a level so you can advance to the next. To collect all the chips, you will have to solve puzzles and avoid obstacles. So that's a look at Windows 3.1 over DOSBox. Using these programs did bring back old memories and also makes me realize just how far we've come since then. It's insane that I'm able to run what was on a big desktop computer on a device that fits in my pocket now. So what classic Windows programs or games have you used? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a like. 
And if you are interested in seeing more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.